you got Lady Blade with Redefined Horizons. This is the third time I'm recording this video because the first time I got all dorked up and the second time I didn't have my sound turned on. Yeah. All right, what are we doing in this video? We're going to show you how to read a specific plan and figure out if you can develop a particular parcel, particular piece of real estate. All right, so I have on my screen the specific plan for Diablo Grande in Stanislaus County. I was contacted by a uh, contacted by a developer. He's in under contract to buy a 50 acre parcel. Check the zoning on the county GIS site. It's covered by the specific plan, so you got to get into the specific plan to figure out what you can actually do with the parcel. So, how do you do that? Here's the basic workflow. Get a copy of the specific plan. Make sure it's the current specific plan and the right one. Okay. Look for a map in the specific plan that tells you what zoning applies to your subject parcel. Read that zoning regulation in the specific plan and try and figure it out. Those are the basic steps. Okay, so we've completed step one. We have the current specific plan. We're going to go to step two. We're going to look for a map. So if you scroll down here in the table of contents, you will find a list of figures right here. Page 8 is the general plan map, page 10 is the zoning map. Okay, now every specific plan is a little bit different, so you got to carefully look at that table of contents to figure out where your map might be, and might not always be a map. could be something funky like a table of APNs, but in this case it's a map, usually is a map. Okay, so let's go down to that zoning map. By the way, here's the general plan exhibit. Okay, my parcel's right here in this area they call Salido. Salado, excuse me. Okay, so here's our zoning map, folks. So our parcel again is right here. Okay, in this area they call Salado. So if you read this zoning map right here, they show you. It is a conservation area. The district, the zoning district is General Agriculture A2. So our parcel is in a General Agricultural District named Salado. Okay. If you read these two little asterisks here, you come down here and see this note, it says see chapter four for applicable rural residential district, R-A. So that's the zoning that applies to our parcel. Now, this exhibit sucks, right? Because I can't really tell based off this map if my parcel is in here, right? So public agencies and consultants that prepare specific plans, put in a better map. <laughs> this map is just, the scale is too large and uh, you can't tell, right? So it's a pain in the butt. So how do we get around that? All right, I'm gonna show you guys real quick. We're gonna pull up QGIS, greatest desktop GIS software on the planet, open source. Okay, so we're gonna open that. I give it a minute here, and I downloaded some shape files from the county. We're just gonna start a new empty project. We're gonna go to layer, create, nope, add layer, add vector layer. We are going to go grab the zoning for Stanislaus County, we're going to add it, just reproject it to WGS84, which is fine. Then we're going to go get the parcels, tax assessor parcels, add that. All right, there's our parcel layer. We're going to zoom in here to our parcel, all right, which is this long skinny guy right here. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the zoning for that. So I'm going to pull zoning up here. I'm going to just make it current, and I'm going to click on the Identify tool, click my parcel, and you can see it pulls up the zoning polygon from the layer below, and it tells me, yep, your parcel is in the specific plan. That's what that means right there. All right, so it actually is in the specific plan, even though you can't tell from the exhibit in the specific plan. You'll also notice Stanislaus County has some issues. Their zoning polygons don't line up with their tax assessor polygons. It happens. All right, so there you go. That's how I figured out that our parcel was actually in the specific plan. Hard to tell from this exhibit. Okay, so once we know that, we got to go see Chapter 4 to get the RA zoning regulations. So let's go do that. So here it is, Rural Residential RA. Okay, what is its general plan designation? They call it Estate Residential Detached Single Family. That's just code for uh, big houses for rich people that like to live in the country. That's what Estate Residential means. Okay, and then right down here, they have a very important table. OK, 
Okay, so here's a table of the rules that apply in this rural residential zone. Now, what's important in here for us is that we have a three acre minimum. Okay, that's going to tell us roughly how many lots we can get on our parcel if we subdivide. Now, there are some other requirements here. So you can only cover 10% of the lot with your structure. Your lot's got to be at least 200 feet wide. You can only fence 50% of it. Okay, there's some setback requirements. All right, none of those are going to be super important on this particular development because our lots are so big, they're three acres. Those requirements are important when you, when you get a little more constrained and you're, and you're pushing your structures up against the boundaries of the lot. But for us, what's important in this table is three acre minimum lot size. Okay, now there you go. So let's just review what we did real quick. We got the right specific plan. We found a map in the specific plan that showed us what zoning applied to our parcel. We confirmed that in QGIS because the exhibits in the specific plan sucked. We went and read the zoning regulation in the specific plan, pulled out the most important piece of information, which is that we had a three acre minimum lot size. Okay. All right now, I also did a quick check of the topography based on the National Map Bureau UHGS quad map. And I also pulled the FEMA flood information for the subject parcel. Okay, and then I put together an email for the client, which I will show you here. Okay, so uh, I just tell the client, his name is Hyatt. Hey, reviewed the specific plan that covers your parcel. Here's what I found. Number one, 50 acre parcels included in the Salado Conservation Area. That's that zoning district. Two, RA zoning would apply. Three, RA zoning would allow four lots as small as three acres with some other restrictions. Okay, then I tell them, hey, specific plan was really hard to interpret. We want to confirm, verify our zoning with the county. There's a process we can use to do that. Based off the topo map, you probably do have some buildable areas on this parcel. By the way, you're outside of a flood zone with the base flood elevation, so you probably don't got to worry about major flooding issues. Best case scenario, you could get 16 lots on here with the three acre minimum. 10 lots might be more realistic. You know, it just would depend on the terrain and some other factors. They say, hey, there's some things you need to check out, water supply, terrain, environmental concerns, access easement rights, similar stuff to that. By the way, you can't rely on this information because we're not under contract yet. If you want, you can hire me. We'll prepare. We'll review the specific plan in detail, prepare a zoning report. We can work with you on a land development feasibility study. Just get a hold of me. Let me know if you want us to do that work. I'll get you a proposal. I give him a rough ballpark on what I think a feasibility, land development feasibility study would cost so he can decide if he wants to spend that money. There you go. Quick and dirty, right? You know, your average uh, real commercial real estate broker ought to be able to do what we just did, right? Read a specific plan, figure out what's important to the client. So we sent that email to the client, and now you guys know you got some crash course training on specific plans. Help us get every specific plan too. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We will catch you on the next video.